Okay, this is chapter three, part two. I walked out of school the next day, clutching the brown sack, and immediately scanned the schoolyard for Maxie. I spotted her on the front steps and walked over. Hi, I said. Hi. Maxie stood on the third step down, arms crossed. I took a moment to look at anything but her. The scarred brick face of the school, three fours and a thousand sad stories tall, the chain link fence marking the playground edges. Funny how I had barbed wire at the top, as if anyone would try to get into school if they didn't have to be there. Can I? My tongue was all tied up and I chickened out. I sighed. This was supposed to get easier. She knew it was coming anyway. I asked the same question practically every day, and she always gave the same answer. Maxie stood there waiting to complete my humiliation. Can I walk you home, I said. I know my way home. Sometimes I thought maybe she waited outside just to hear me say, hear me ask so she could say no. Stick said girls played games like this all the time, and if you wanted to get anywhere, you had to play along until you learned the rules. I know, I said, just for company I meant. Maxie raised her eyebrows. I held my breath. Maybe tomorrow, she said quickly. She pulled her bare hands up inside the sleeves of her coat. I gotta go. She started to walk away. I swallowed hard. Now or never. I got something for you, I said. The words came out mumbled, like I was clearing my throat or something. She would never go for me. What did you say? She turned back to me and wrinkled her forehead. This is for you, I said, holding out the paper bag. Yeah, she said, for me. She stood there looking at me, looking at the bag. I shifted my feet. Yeah, I thought they were nice. I mean, I knew you didn't have, I thought you'd like them. It was maybe 30 degrees outside, but I stood there sweating. I shook the bag until she took it and peeked inside. The corners of her mouth shut up and she gave me a bewildered, wide-eyed look. Maxie slid her hands into the mittens and she smiled as big as I've ever seen her smile. Thanks, Sam. What's it for? What's it for? Uh, for you, I said. So you'll let me walk you home. No reason. Maxie grinned again. Well, come on then, she said. She skipped down the stairs and strode across the schoolyard. I stood stuck in place. I couldn't believe it. In the middle of the yard, she turned around. Sam, are you coming or what? She yelled. I ran and caught up with her at the edge of the schoolyard. She snapped her fingers at me. Well, she tried anyways. The mittens made it tricky, but I knew what she was doing, so I laughed. Gotta keep up, man, she said. I, she grinned, I grinned back. It didn't get any better than that. We started toward her house. She walked fast for a girl, I thought. Like she had places to be and nothing could keep her from getting there. I liked that. I wanted to go places too. She didn't say a word to me as we walked, but I was too happy to care. She looked up at me once, though, as we passed the last intersection before the long stretch of projects began. I studied buildings a lot, partly to get ideas for this block tower. It struck me as odd each time I thought about it, how buildings could have such personalities. The stores and apartments Maxie and I walked past had seen sad times and looked as if they had taken much of the sadness upon themselves. They reminded me of children lined up in an orphanage, seen but abandoned, together but alone, unloved. I almost reached for Maxie's hand right then, but I feared it was too much too soon. As we approached the corner of her street, she slowed. We turned onto her block and she walked even slower. In front of her building, she stopped altogether and turned to me. Well, this is it, she said, staring at her toes. Oh, I said. I already knew where she lived, but I wasn't about to tell her that. She raised her head and looked straight at me with a strange light in her eyes. And, she said, her tone daring me to comment. I looked up at the building, at its eight rows of windows, like worried eyes gazing down upon the street. I shrugged. And what? She blinked and smiled. Never mind, nothing. She shook her head. Aren't you cold, she asked. Nah, it's not too bad, I said, trying not to shiver. My face was freezing, but I didn't care. If Maxie wanted to stand out here and talk to me, I wasn't going to complain. She nodded and tugged her hat down over her ears. She half smiled up at me. She was so cute, I had to look away so she wouldn't think I was some kind of freak staring at her. She cupped her hands and blew into her new mittens. Warm, she said, flashing me that great half smile again. Feel. She put her hands on my cheeks. Warm was an understatement. She pulled her hands away and we stood there for a few minutes longer. So I guess I'd better get going, I said finally. Yeah, she said, see you. She went toward her building. At the door, she turned around and waved both hands at me. I smiled as I walked up the block. I slowed when I saw Stick standing on the opposite corner, talking to a slick-looking brother in a black leather jacket and heavy combat boots. The brother was tall, had a three-inch crown of hair on top of him. He and Stick clasped hands, then pulled together and bumped shoulders. The brother leaned in the window of the car idling beside them and pulled out a small flat box and handed it to Stick. He thumped Stick on the back, got in the car, and drove off. Stick turned the box over in his hands, studying it closely. A moment later, he raised his head and spotted me. He looked a little surprised, but nodded hello. I crossed the street. Who was that? 
A friend, Stick said, looking after the car. We started walking toward home. What friend? Stick rubbed his hand over his neck and looked at me sideways. What are you doing here over here anyway? I shrugged, just walking Maxie home. Yeah? Stick gave me a sharp look out of the corner of his eye. She your girl now or what? Nah, I said, kicking the ground. We're just friends. We're just friends, he mimicked. I slugged him in the arm. He staggered to the side and laughing. Shoot, that was weaky hooted, jogging a circle around me. Come back, I'll get you real good, I threatened, smacking my fist into my other palm. Stick grinned. He knew I was bluffing. I didn't feel like fighting him. I was still thinking about Maxie. Stick moved back around side me. I caught a glimpse of something in his hand. What did he give you, I asked. Stick cleared his throat. Loan me a book, he said. He lifted it so I could see, then lowered it fast. I couldn't read the title. I stuck my hand out. Can I see? Maybe later, Stick said. He blinked a lot, which meant he was lying. Stick usually told me most everything I wanted to know. When he got secretive like this, it meant something bad. I shivered. Stick could keep his secret. I didn't want it.